Alright, what's going on dudes and welcome to a little bit of behind the scenes for Revenge. Got a lot of requests to do this upon posting the video yesterday, so I thought I'd at least go over what I contributed as far as building the sets, doing the animation, rendering out the footage, compositing, and editing all the clips together in the correct order to make a finished product. So first, I thought we'd take a look at the rigs used. Now these were actually not made by me, they were made by the wonderful man who goes by the, the YouTube handle uh, Bootstrap Buckaroo. And he is amazing, he is literally, he, he is a professional Maya user and he does lots of insane stuff and he's actually planning on doing a series with these, that's the only reason he has the rigs and that should start up soon. I know he's trying to stock up on footage just so that when he does start he can bring out sort of a, a constant flow of products. So, I mean, everyone who, who contributed, their links will all be in the description. Uh, to give more of a formal thank you to all of them, I know the credits might have been a little obscure yesterday, I'm not sure how many people paid attention to them. But anyway, this is the Usher rig that was used and it has a, a few nifty features, and I'll go ahead and show them really quickly. So these are basically just the body controllers. As you move them around, let's go ahead and disable mesh selection. Um, basically the body parts will follow these things around. And that's how you animate. You just go frame by frame, technically not frame by frame, I mean say frame 707 here, you, you have the arm in this position. I don't have auto key on right now because I don't want to change anything in this scene. But then we go to frame 730, we pull it here and had we auto key on, it would simply interpolate. And that's how you animate. Now the only trick obviously is getting the timing correct. And that's really all there is to keyframe animation, which is the only thing I actually used in animating this video. There were no physical simulations. Nothing of that sort, so really it was all click and drag the body controllers around and make your character do what he is going to do. So this is actually the more complex, not, not complex that I'll be used, but the more complex setup on the rig that David put so eloquently together because he is amazing. So mouth control, you move this around and it actually dynamically changes the mesh around his mouth and adjust the the transparency so on and so forth and that is how we got him to lip sync this over here adjusts the teeth let me actually open his mouth a bit more so that you can see that and his teeth will will open and close and so what i actually did for for the lip syncs funny enough is to get them really perfect as perfect as i could with um a discrete step mouth rig is I actually went and recorded myself lip syncing to the song with a really close up on uh, uh, angle on my mouth and then I literally went through I synced up the, uh, the the song with the video and I went through frame by frame I watched where my mouth was in the video and simply emulated that to the best of my ability on the uh, the rig right here and that's how I got the lip syncs to work <laughs> and uh, I got a lot of compliments on it so I, I guess I, it, it seemed to work out, so I was I was pretty pleased with that. A couple more controls. He has the elbows, obviously, that you, you probably saw moving around in the video. He has eye controls for, for blinking, and his brows go up and down as well as the, uh, the tilt on them. And he's also got a, a dynamic rig aspect ragdoll. Uh, a ragdoll physics ability, which I didn't use, but it's there because David put it in because he is super amazing once again, so that's like the master control. And then you've got arms and legs that you can adjust as well, and then if you drag him around, he'll actually do some ragdoll physics um, once you once you catch, cash, I can't say that word, <laughs> cash the frames. So um, yeah, that's that. Now finally, you probably noticed him pointing. They're actually different hands, not individual finger rigs. It's that you simply switch out the hands like so. And that is how that works. Let me actually try to get as close as possible so you can sort of see the different hand gestures that he has. And really, I just use the uh, the pointing and the, your, your standard closed fist 
in the uh, the Usher scene. And that is about the basics for how the rig worked. And now it's my turn to learn how to put all this stuff together instead of just being the one to, uh, to animate. So that'll be my next step. But for now, David, Mr. Bootstrap Buckaroo, is awesome. <laughs> so now let's actually go into the, um, the scene where he's in the club and falling in love because of the DJ and stuff. Don't save. And that's just a reference file. Close out all that stuff. And right now we're actually in the, the main camera that was used to render out the whole scene. Let's go into perspective. And uh, funny enough, actually one camera was all that was used for the entire thing. So what we can actually do is if we want, we can just play right now. I'm not sure how laggy it'll be because I'm doing a screen capture, but you can see him going along and, and doing his thing, singing and stuff because he is Usher, but he's actually Tryhard Ninja because Tryhard Ninja was the one doing all the singing. For some reason, some people thought I sang. I, I did the rapping. I, I did Pitbull, but I can't sing. I cannot sing. And Tryhard Ninja is amazing at singing and all that stuff. So yes, he sang, not me. Not me. <laughs> so anyway, that's all that happened. Let me actually go ahead and re-enable the, uh, the rig controls here so you can sort of see what's going on. You can actually see as they move during the animation. And again, the, the mouth and the, uh, the teeth going crazy all over the place. And uh, I, I did the best. What, what I really tried to do in order to... Uh, <laughs> the, the main reason that this whole singing thing looked remotely decent was simply because of the hip movement. Um, and what happened is as the hips oscillated back and forth trying to stay on sync with the beat it uh, moved the whole body around basically and uh, and gave it more of a, a bounce I guess <laughs> best way best way to to paraphrase how it all works let's go ahead and hide this again because I'll do a little quick test render after going over the uh, the whole scene so this is the entire set right here um, it's surrounded by a night biome and the lighting setup Let's go ahead and show some lights up in here. We have just a light um, for the, the glowstone. And that's one of the only shadow casting lights. There's also a point light. I'll see if I can find it way out. Yeah, there's spotlight. Excuse me. There's a, a spotlight out in the distance right over here. That's uh, basically there just to cast sort of a, a global shadow um, to give it a bit more depth. And then finally, there is an ambient light, which I gave a, a red tinge because uh, I thought it gave it more of a, a club vibe sort of feel and there's also um a no no shadow casting point light for the fire and there's a little light on his face which I found was actually very very useful in both scenes the uh, the story as well as the club scene to illuminate his expressions a bit more and and make them easier to uh, to see so let's go ahead and hide that again and we'll actually go in and show the render camera and just render off a quick frame. Why not? So it'll take about 10, 15 seconds or so. I saw someone uh, leaving a top comment. <laughs> well, they got a top comment on the video yesterday saying each frame took like 12 hours to render or something. I was like, whoa, this ain't no Pixar film, man. <laughs> Pixar, I think. Their frames take between like 6 and 90 hours. It's something ridiculous on a render farm of thousands of computers. Um, yeah, Pixar is redonkulous. <laughs> so that's that. Now that actually doesn't look like the final scene and that's because we had a couple passes. So this is your standard Maya software pass with all depth mapped shadows, which is the reason why it actually goes pretty quickly. It was a bit slower this time simply because I'm screen capping. At the same time, again, I can just quickly scrub through and you can see as the, the camera goes by on all its different angles. And after we did that standard software pass, what I did is I did a little a little cheat for the ambient occlusion. Um, and I, I guess it's not so much a cheat. It was an easy way to go about doing it. So let's actually go ahead and hide the, uh, the night biome. Go ahead and turn on mesh selection again. So let's hide that. And what I did was I went ahead, selected everything, 
and really rough made it all into a, a Lambert and gave it all completely white color and I was actually I'm I have two monitors here so I simply went into my outliner that was over um, in my other view now actually this I have to manually change but you'll kind of understand for for the purposes of what I did I, I changed everything to a white Lambert I went into the outliner and, and manually selected the usher rig to do that and then I simply switched up in the render settings over to the hardware 2.0 which is new in my 2012 and then I added the screen space ambient occlusion and what that does is it's a really quick and dirty that is what he or she said innuendo all over the place um, a way of just really approximating the the occlusion and then I I went ahead and rendered out the same pass or the the same scene excuse me using the same camera and that gave me the ambient occlusion so we'll go ahead and just render out a frame right there it'll take a few seconds to initiate the uh, the viewport renderer and uh, one thing I forgot to do is change the ambient light so that um, it is just a completely bright white and again that's actually parented to the night biome so it's not showing up <laughs> when I enable that so anyway I, I adjusted the ambient light so that it was uh, as bright as it possibly can as well as being completely white and then all we had to do was composite that on top of the software render with a multiply blend, apply some levels adjustments, um, color correction, color balance, so on and so forth, and then you get a fancy finished product. And then you simply edit all the clips together in your uh, your linear editor, which I, I used um, Sony Vegas, just because it's simple and easy, and I don't have Premiere Pro, and I didn't bother to get it. <laughs> so anyway, that's about that for the uh, the singing scene now let's go ahead and and open up our other story scene so I'll go ahead and actually um, I'll open up the end so that we can actually take a look at the fights because that was probably a lot of people's favorite thing to see I'm just taking a wild guess there violence is always appreciated <laughs> so again close out these tabs and um, take a, a quick overview of the entire set, which is a complete and other mess because I was really, really lazy in in some of the things that I did as far as not naming and grouping things. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing, but you know, it's a little bit more laggy than it should be. So we can quickly scrub through or actually play through and we will see our Steve character going about to do battle with the forces of evil in terms of creepers and and all that jazz and uh, if we want we can quickly go through once again and and play with the actual rendered out camera and I was really pleased because a lot of people actually were able to recognize that I was trying to emulate a scene out of 300 in this and you can actually find that scene if you search 300 slow motion fight scene in the search bar on to YouTube's it should be like the first result so that's that let's actually go into the render cam for it and did not mean to do that <laughs> so we can actually play through it this way and once again you'll you'll see the fight scene really laggy in the viewport as it showed when I was actually doing the animations and again the only difference is the shadows so on and so forth and once again I used the exact same method of compositing with your your software render with no ambient occlusion in that because uh, a real ambient occlusion pass actually adds quite a bit of time onto each frame relative to uh, to what I was aiming for and so I, I went again with the chintzy cheapo viewport ambient occlusion which actually worked out pretty well because YouTube happens to diminish the quality of video clips by a very drastic amount <laughs> So that's that, and once again I can show you the uh, the animation setup for this rig, which is actually a bit different than the, than the other. It was a, an earlier model that, that David put together, and uh, so it doesn't have the dynamic controls as well as the, it uses a, a different method for the, the mouth mesh 
instead of the teeth and the mesh being adjusted independently um, it's all one and you've also got your little emotion <laughs> emotion meter over here so he can smile let's get closer in there and frowny face and be all sad and that he's going to get blown up by a, a creeper so on and so forth and again all it is as far as animation is timing when you're just working with keyframes and and no physical simulation and for any of you looking to uh, try things out like this uh, yourself all I can try to drill into your head is things are animated in much faster speeds than you actually anticipate them to be when you are animating so I don't know, go and watch some Pixar films or something like that because Pixar is astounding as far as what they are able to do with Maya and all that fanciness. So things, I guess all, all I can say is just you don't have as many frames in between um, keys as you might think. And that, that is one thing that, that happens frequently. So... Go back and rework stuff, make sure it's all up to uh, a realistic looking speed, and you should get something that looks kind of nice, hopefully. Hopefully mine was nice. <laughs> um, I got compliments on it, so I'm, I'm happy. I felt all warm and fuzzy on the inside, and yeah, it took a long time. It was a couple months of, of animating to, uh, to get everything done. So I mean, that's that. Once again, adjusted everything to uh, the, the straight up white Lambert material, up to the ambient lights all the way up, and used the, the viewport renderer to add the, the chintzy ambient occlusion, composited with, with uh, multiply blends, and then added some color correction and levels and fanciness, nothing fancy at all, <laughs> and put it all together and get a finished product. And that, my friends, is how it was all put together. So that was probably a really long video, and some of you may have stuck around for the whole thing. I don't know. If you're listening to this, you did. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. Once again, all the people who helped out with the video, you can find all their channel links in the description. I'm sure they would not mind at all if you gave them a visit and, and told them if you enjoyed um, enjoyed the, the show. So <laughs> hopefully you'll... Hopefully you'll be willing to, to do such a thing because they put in a lot of hard work as well. And uh, I can't thank them all enough. So anyway, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And obviously a link to the original video is in the description if you want to watch again with a newfound knowledge of how the visuals were created. So yeah, I'll see you all next time.